Welcome to Empowered Within, a soul-quenching, transformational podcast that will set your soul on fire. Through candid and inspiring conversations, leading experts, celebrities, and healers share their journeys of how they've overcome challenges and face fears to living an empowered life from within. I'm your host, Jennifer Pilates. Welcome to another episode of Empowered Within. Hello, everyone. We're back together for another great show. Today's guest was a cast member of Bravo's Real Housewives of DC, which aired for one epic season in 2010. She's a lifestylist, designer, actor, and creator of Hippie Chicka Blog and Lifestyle Brand and has her very own podcast launching this May. I'd like to welcome to the show, proud mother of five thriving adult darlings, the one and only Mary Amons. Welcome, Mary. Oh, Jennifer, it's so fun to be here with you. My gosh, you're my kind of girl. I I know. We are like fast BFFs. We slid into each other's DMs on Instagram. And the next thing we're going to be having crab cakes in Maryland next summer. Like, (laughs) Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Can't wait. I know. So, Mary, we have to address the elephant in the room. You know what that is. Mary, Mm. I've got to ask this one question. How does someone like yourself in DC decide one day, I want to be a real housewife and I want to put my whole family on TV. (laughs) How does that decision come to you? Jennifer, I will tell you that it was presented to me. It was nothing that I was seeking at all. In fact, I think I might have caught the tail end of a few episodes of the OC because my girls were watching it. And I really had no idea the magnitude of what the show was in the franchise. And also it wasn't as evolved as it is today back in 2009, which is what the year was when this all came my way. But President Obama had just been elected I know that there were production teams that were pitching Bravo for years to bring the franchise to D.C., and I believe that they just didn't see much there until we had our first African-American president take office, and then all eyes were on D.C. So the show was greenlit, and then producers, local producers tried to find women that were candidates and had some sort of connection to one another or connection to the city stories. And so they sought out the women in that were doing a lot of PR in DC. And there were some good friends of mine that have a PR firm and production reached out to them and they put my name forward saying that they thought that I might be a good candidate. And so this is nothing I sought out. In fact, <laughs> it was something I resisted for a little bit and consulted with my father. He was a lawyer and one of the pioneers of the cable business and knows very well the risks around putting yourself and your family on reality television. So that was a hard sell to my dad, first of all, who is my hero and earthly father who takes care of me and my advisor. But he saw the value in it because when I was approached, there were already a few reality shows that had failed in DC. One of them was The Real World and the other was some reality show that Rob Lowe was involved with that was politically driven that didn't get actually aired, I don't think, but they did shoot. And I think that it just didn't take off. Anyway, so when I pitched my dad with this idea, I said, dad, I really don't think that this is going to be anything that's going to be long-term because I don't think these shows work in DC. I think that they're not going to be able to cast women that are politically affiliated because they want to keep their business private. So they're going to go after the social scene uh, or the international scene in DC, and which is exactly what they did. And at the time I was running a charity that I had started in 2006 to raise money for women's and children's causes doing hip and cool art artistic events and fashion shows. And so I was socially prominent at the time and I'm a native, second generation native Washingtonian. So I knew why they liked me. And so when I went to my dad, I said, dad, 
I think this is a one-off. And he knew the backstory of my marriage was crumbling at the time and that I needed to really figure out how to build myself and create some income stream. He said, I give you my blessing, but we're going to be saying a lot of prayers that this works out and that you are going to get trashed or your family will get trashed in the process. And I had a real strong gut. I really had an understanding that this was not going to be a long-term thing. I also had a, a kind of a deal with myself in this where if it was going to translate into something that would continue, I would have to weigh this very heavily because I, I knew that the nature of this machine is to take the good one and put the, bo- the good one on the bottom mm-hmm. as quickly as possible and just shift things up and cause a lot of drama. I knew what I was getting into, but I really had a strong gut feeling that this was not going to be a long-term thing and that that it would work out. And it did. It ended up being a, an incredible blessing and a growing experience that I would never take back. It definitely presented, I know, some challenges within your family and a transformation coming forward. Now, did you make any new friends? Did you have old friends that joined the show with you? They cast us and part of the casting process was them letting us know that they were very interested in us. And did we have anybody in our worlds that would consider it or be a good candidate? And I knew that Linda, who ended up being my castmate, would be perfect for it and bring a lot of entertainment value (laughs) because she's just (laughs) really funny and fun. And very direct and tiny, but she's, she is a force to be reckoned with. But yeah, I did suggest a few people. And as far as new friends, I made friends with everybody who was on the production team. So I made, (laughs) did make some new friends, but it was pretty isolating at the time because we were in high demand for our time. It was really, there was a formula that I didn't realize at the time that became interesting. We were required to be available five days a week for five hours a day for five months. Wow. But it ended up being longer because of the White House crash incident. So we ended up extending our time filming to about seven months, but that was the formula and it was pretty demanding. And I was playing competitive tennis at the time. And I just had to say, ladies, I'm not available because I have these demands. So it was was pretty tightened up my availability to be doing anything else, but taking care of my family and doing what they wanted me to do. Yeah, that's a huge commitment. I don't think that anyone realizes. Now, do you know if that's still the recipe, if that's still the formula that they're using on shows? I don't know if that's the recipe, but it's probably likely because production is on a union scale. And so all those people that worked with us were under the union and their time was limited. And so if I had to guess, it's probably the same. Yeah. Now, are you still friendly with any of the housewives on your cast or any of the other housewives that are out there? I am. In fact, I have a bunch of friends. I have, first of all, Linda Ercolation, who was on my cast, has been one of my closest friends for almost 20 years. So I was bringing in my one of my best buds to this. And we had this pact. We are just true, authentic sisters. And when we agreed to do this, we made a pact that we would not allow production or editing to interfere because we knew that we were not in control of editing. So we knew that there was a risk that they would try to spin us against each other, which didn't happen, thankfully. But we made a pact that we would have each other's backs throughout this process. And no matter the way any anything or anything that could have been used against us in the process would come between our authentic relationship. That is so sad. And then other on other casts, I know a bunch of people. Like I know girls from Dallas. I know Sonia from New York. I know Alex McCord very well. She and I became very good friends. Who else do I know? I know Kyle from Beverly Hills. I know a bunch yeah. of them. So if I'm sure our listeners are just they're just eating their popcorn and just salivating, but just listening to your stories. Is there one piece of juicy information that you can give to our listeners that maybe no one knows that goes on behind the scenes of the Housewives Mm. shows? Yes. 
I would say that they like to keep us as separated as possible during filming because when we're doing our confessionals, that is a way for what's called a line producer. So the person who is sitting across from me asking me poignant questions about what's going on or how I feel about a certain someone or probing. Basically, the line producer is probing. They're also dropping in bits of gossip that is happening on the other side. And so they kept us so busy that I I did not interact with Linda very much when we were filming because we were just so busy and they didn't always have us together working together. What they're doing is they're throwing coals on a fire basically and they encourage you to become friendly with production and like the camera guys and they'll drop little things in and here and there and then you have a a production assistant that's assigned to you that is also stirring things up a bit and also listening to you voice your concerns or your whatever is going on in your personal life because you end up becoming pretty close with that production assistant that's assigned to you. It's all a churning machine that's under underneath that's also feeding storylines and editing and also fueling how they're going to go and probe more in different directions to create the drama. Wow. So you must Mm -hmm. have needed quite the detox after this experience. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It was, I will never forget this, Jennifer. I came home from our press tour after the show had started to air, like the first launched. We were in Los Angeles at TCA, which is where NBC Universal basically premieres all their new shows and announces all their new shows for the next season. So that was a huge, exciting, fun experience. And I was in the same room with all of the NBC fabulous stars. Jimmy Fallon came up to me and was like, taking selfies with my own phone with him. It was so much fun. And I ran into some people that I actually know. And I we hung out with Jeff Lewis and a bunch of those fun Bravo liberties. Anyway, I came home. Oh, so we went from LA to New York. Now it wasn't a red eye, but it was like the very last flight from Los Angeles to New York City to JFK. And my bag got picked up by the wrong person with all of my wardrobe. And we were to be on set at the Today Show, The View, all these different NPR, all these different interviews that whole entire day, the next day. And we were going from West Coast to East Coast. So we were exhausted, like clearly exhausted. And this is where I will talk about how God in the universe really took care of me in that situation because my entire wardrobe was in this giant Toomey bag that looked like every else's. And we arrived very late into JFK and the last bag on the carousel was a complete mimic of my suitcase. So all of a sudden I was like, someone has picked up my bag. So there was a number on the bag that was left there. So I picked it up called literally by the time I got to our hotel, that person had delivered my bag back to the hotel and I was able to leave. It was almost like the exact timing. So there's there was an intervention right there. But the point of my story is that after that whole exhausting press tour and all of that, I got home and my husband at the time booked me a massage up in my bedroom with this amazing woman who does like Reiki. She's this little teeny tiny, probably below five feet tall woman who was in her 70s. She set up her table and I got out of my beautiful bathtub and got on that table and she had me get into a fetal position and literally put one hand on my head and one hand on my sacrum and held me for probably 10 minutes. I purged. I was bawling. Emotion, exhaustion, I let a lot go right there. And I'll never forget that. It was one of the most powerful moments I've had in a therapeutic way where this woman knew exactly what she was doing. She could sense it within me. It it let go of all of the stress, the exhaustion, the worry, the fear that I just, I was like purged in that moment. And it was just because she was holding me like an infant. And I was in a fetal position on my side. It was amazing. What an experience. She was holding space for you so you could be vulnerable, so you could let go, so you felt safe, which is so hard. And I had no idea what she was doing. I wasn't as 
spiritually astute at that time either. I didn't know what she was doing, but it caused me to just let go like I've like I had never done before in that moment. What, it was amazing. Wow, what a beautiful transition from one world into your spiritual journey, into your transformational journey. You have transformed so much from then to now. And I'm wondering if you could share some of that with our listeners. We're all transforming every day. And you, having been in the spotlight and gone through everything, and then also in the limelight, just living in D.C. and being who you are and outspoken and amazing with charity, that's a lot of pressure. When you yes, have- Yeah. How has this transformation been for you? Because you really have changed your entire life. I have. I would say that the challenges that I've faced, I've realized have been the challenges that I've needed to change and heal myself because we are all born into trauma. We all experience trauma at some level. It's interesting when I look at my life and I see the progression of how I started as a young mother pregnant at 19 and how I just made a family and created a life and piggybacked on my parents' lifestyle. And my husband worked for my dad and we bought a house just down the street from them. And my mother had a baby at the same time I did, like within weeks of each other, my first, her seventh. And and just how that was done so seamlessly. And when I think about that, how that, what? How did that happen? It's almost like I'm watching a a surreal movie of myself when I think back to those experiences. But I will say that I missed a whole lot of development because of the way I started my family and just married a man that I was crazy about. And I had only known for a month and got pregnant and just pulled him along. And he went along and we basically played house for 26 years and had all kinds of ups and downs in those 26 years. And I can't say it's all bad. In fact, a lot of it was fabulous. Like a lot of it was fabulous, but it, it wasn't sustainable because there wasn't the foundation that is needed to, to sustain a relationship. And we never matured in our relationship and we never had the communication skills, even though we had five years of couples therapy and it just didn't start out the way it should. But divorce and loss, basically facing losses, losses of my stability, losses of my home, my kids growing up and not really needing me much anymore, which I found a lot of my self-affirmation and my identity in that. And just being left alone to figure myself out really forced me and having made some terrible, major mistakes in my life that I now realize if I had not been in those places, I would not be as evolved as I am today. The transformation has been significant and profound over, I'd say the last, most recently over the last since COVID, since basically January of 2020, when I made a decision to come back to Maryland and be with my family from living two and a half years in Dallas. But what I've done is I've researched people and mentors to follow and really learn from. And so much of what I've learned is I identify with so so much of what those mentors have gone through. And if those people had not gone through the challenges that they faced, they would not be able to mentor me. So I'm finding that I now have an opportunity to pay it forward and authentically do the work to transform myself and inspire. So I'm I'm going to start a podcast and I'm starting a blog that I hope will, I'm hopeful that will be inspirational. It's going to be a lifestyle blog and it's basically just going to just be a really down to earth, authentic way to live and mix up your style, mix up your health and wellness and just learn how to not take life so seriously and be kind to yourself, which is so important. That's been a huge part of what I've learned in this transformational process is that I have been so skilled and so fine tuned in taking care of others, including my family, mostly my family, but that is my heart. I love to take care of people that, that turns me on, but I have not 
taken care of myself in the same regard that I've taken care of others. So I have this thing where I have a picture of myself as an almost one-year-old on my dresser. And it's this beautiful black and white studio shot that my mom had done as a gift for my grandparents. It's just serving as a reminder to me every morning when I wake up and I see that little girl, how important it is to make sure that I am nurturing and feeding that little girl just as as well as I am everyone else, so. That is so beautiful, and it's so true, and especially this last year, I know everything has been upside down, and you and I have talked off air about this, our trials and tribulations with the health within our family and our loved ones, when we needing to take a step back and remember that we have to fill our own cup in order to be able to continue to help others. That's a big process. Along your way, along your journey, who has been most inspirational as far as mentors or peers you have really felt at one with that have really made such an impact on your life now having found them? I'm a Christian, so I'd say first and foremost, Jesus. (laughs) Of course. I am am a big fan of Jesus. He is my guide. I recently connected with an old friend from Dallas. Abby Farron is her name, and she's a fashion designer and had her line in, in Nordstrom, and I've known her for over 10 years. Anyway, she started recently working with Susie Batiste, who is the founder of the company Poopery and still on the board and is very involved. She went through her own personal transformation 17 years ago. She was suicidal. She had declared two bankruptcies. She had two failed marriages and she went, she started studying under a man named Gay Hendricks and also Byron Katie, she changed her life. She completely changed her life. And now she's on Forbes. She was the second year voted on Forbes, most, I guess, wealthiest self-made women. And she's written. So when she was going through a transformation 17 years ago, she started writing, she started writing her journey. And she figured out that she was writing a course. And that course sat on a bookshelf for, I think, 15 or 16 years. And she just was led to shift and do more work because she's experienced a lot of trauma in her life, some sexual abuse and stuff. And so she was going through another phase of healing herself. And she realized that she had something that would be transformational for others. So I've gone through three rounds with Susie on her Alive OS course. So I would say that Susie is the most recent person that I would say is my mentor and an influence that has made such an incredible impact on where I am in my life. Because what I've learned from her is that she was where I have been or even deeper and darker. And here she is now a completely successful independent woman who is on Forbes top lists. It's amazing. And she's just a genuine, very relatable woman that I know we're going to see more and more of. In fact, I told her recently, I was like, you better get ready for Oprah. Oprah's going to be calling you pretty soon to be in her garden in Montecito. (laughs) So is that kind of your goal where you're going next with your lifestyle brand and the blog and the podcast? Is that your hope in moving forward? I have what's funny, Jennifer, is that right after Housewives, I started meeting with some business coaches and they were people that were interested in helping me figure out my platform and what I wanted to do as far as shaping something that would resonate with me because that was the biggest thing is that whatever I do, it has to be authentic, true to me. I didn't want to just start making things up just to make money because I knew that that would not work. And I sat down with a business coach and this woman helped me create a pyramid. It was basically a pyramid of how, what is my ultimate goal and my dream and where do I start? She basically opened the meeting with, what do you want? Like, where do you see yourself going with this? And I said, first of all, I love people. I love connecting with people. I love knowing people. I love getting to know people. I love sharing people's stories. I'm fascinated by people's journeys and how their experiences and their choices have shaped them. So I said, okay, so I want to start a lifestyle brand. This is 11 years ago. I want to start a lifestyle brand. And this is before Gwyneth Paltrow, before Jessica Alba, all these, or Joanna Gaines. And I said, Martha Stewart, 
with a much more down to earth, earth, authentic spin, less pretentious, approachable, which I think Joanna and Chip Gaines have done a great job doing. I said, my ultimate goal is to be on the same level as Oprah. And the girl was like, okay, all right. I like it. You can do that. If you put your mind to it and you throw that out, you can get there and you can build this. And this is our platform. This is our pyramid. And we'll, we'll work on how to get you there. And then life took over. A lot of big changes and traumas happened in my life with divorce and just basically losing my house and taking over and supporting my kids on my own, which I didn't expect. I've had this brewing in me since I don't know when. I know that it's it started in a structured way back then out of the need to support myself and to take the lowest hanging fruit. I launched my design business because I'm an interior designer and studied that in school. So I did that for a while, but that wasn't fulfilling me the way I, I had hoped it would. And I love the work. I love the creative process, but I just, I wasn't liking being put in the middle of a middleman ordering sofas and things not working out. And then I'm the bad guy and in a couple situation and they're my client, I'm spending all his money basically through his wife. And I, it just, there's a lot of stuff, a, a part of being in that position in that business that isn't fun at all. That kind of takes away from the creative process. So I've had this brewing in me. And so now that I'm back home and I'm helping caretake basically my dad and his health issues, I've had the opportunity and the time and the space And COVID has leveled us, changed the rules, basically. And it's given me the opportunity to really assess. And that all of that started coming back up. All of that dream started resurfacing. And one thing that was blocking me was, what do I call it? Because my name has some recognition, but it was one season of a reality show on Bravo. And a lot of people have no idea who Mary Amons is. And that's fine. I, I did not do this to be famous. So I couldn't call it my own name. I wanted it to have a vibe. I wanted it to have a feeling. I wanted it to have a brand. And this is through part of my work with Susie. I was, I was in a salt bath because I take two salt baths a day. And I was in a salt bath and I was on my phone in the salt bath because I carefully can do that. I was texting with a friend who was an architect in Mexico and we were just bantering back and forth. And I was like, this is in me. I have to do this. I have to do this. I just don't know what to call it. And I said, I'm a hippie. It's like this laid back approachable brand. I'm a hippie. And he goes, you're a hippie chica. And I saw those two words together And I was like, the baby is born. I just gave birth in this salt bath. That is it. That is it. That is it. And I'm telling you, Jennifer, within 30 minutes, this is how God in the universe works. Within 30 minutes, I owned a domain. I had, this is at night. Now I'm talking like 11, 1130 at night. I bought the domain. It was available. H-I-P-Y. So I-E wasn't available, but H-I-P-Y, which is even better for me. That was available. I had my Instagram account already set up and already defined. Like it was all I needed was that, that block taken and it just exploded. I woke up like a new woman. Now it's going to expand into a podcast where I'm going to talk to people of all walks of life. And to me, everyone matters. I don't care if you're famous or not, but I will be talking to interesting people that people know. And if they don't know who they are, they will by the end of the conversation that we have. It's the Hippie Chica podcast. And I'm going to interview people and get their stories about how their challenges and their victories have shaped them and just telling their stories in a conversation. That sounds amazing. There's a couple of, yeah, there's a couple of podcasts that I've been, that I'm a big fan of. And one of them is Rob Lowe's because he's basically talking to his friends and we're getting the inside scoop on their relationship. And the conversation is just flowing because they're buddies. And it's fascinating to me. Anyway, that's uh, that's on the docket. That is also very exciting. So if our listeners want to suddenly start stalking Mary, where can everyone go and find out more about this hippie chica? Yes. So it's that simple. It's hippiechica.com and it's H-I-P-Y-C-H-I-C-A.com. And then the Instagram account for that brand is Hippie Chica Official. And I'm on Clubhouse as Mary Amons. And then my 
personal Instagram is Mary Amons, just my full name, M-A-R-Y-A-M-O-N-S. And then my design work is also on Mary Amons Design. Awesome. This is so exciting. And I'm so happy for you, Mary, because talk about such an amazing, successful transformation journey. I hope maybe later this year that we can have you back on the podcast and you're going to be telling us all of this amazing stuff and how your podcast is going. I'm so excited for you. Mary, this is the time of the show where we ask you, are you ready to be in the hot seat? Am I ready to be in the hot seat? Sure. All right. Always. Always. Yes, you are because you're Mary. Mary's ready. (laughs) Okay. So These are just quick questions and we will see. So no thinking required. That's the best part about this. If you could be on a housewife show again, would you? No. Champagne or wine? (laughs) Wine. Beach or mountains? Beach. Andy Cohen, friend or foe? Friend. If you could go back in time 10 years and have 10 seconds with yourself, what would you say? Take things less seriously. I love that. Oh my God, Mary, this has been so much fun. And something that I just, I'm so excited. We're like soul sisters from Maryland, DC area together. This has been such an honor to have you. Thank you so much for being so vulnerable, so authentic and sharing your story with us and our listeners. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you, Jennifer. And I'm so proud of you for what you're doing because it's impacting people. I know it is. And that's what we're called to do. We have a journey and all of our journeys matter. Sharing our stories, I think, is so important to inspire. I know that's my true purpose now. I've really connected with my true purpose that I'm meant to inspire and be very vulnerable and very truthful about what I've gone through. And so I think you're doing the same and I applaud you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much. And thank you again. I'm glad that we are two soul sisters on the same journey here to help shine the light and help others tell their story as well. Until next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Empowered Within with Jennifer Pilates. Your feedback is important. It helps me to connect with you and gives me insight into who you are and what you're enjoying about the show. For today's show notes and discount codes from today's sponsors, head over to jenniferpilates.com. Until next time, may you live an empowered life from within.